Sean, I'm joined by Gonzaga College quarterbacks and offensive coordinator coach Danny Schachter, a.k.a. Coach Shaq. Coach, uh, thanks so much for taking time. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. So I wanted to get right to it, and I mentioned to you I like to talk about the kiddos and talk with them uh, as human beings and not necessarily pieces of meat. That is That said, 247 Sports ranks Caleb Williams as the highest-ranked recruit in the mid-Atlantic region era uh, area in 10 years, so uh, really a generation here. And you get to coach the kid. So what's it like to coach him? Well, coaching Caleb is a blast. And, you know, you think it's a blast probably for the wrong reasons. You're thinking it's, oh, man, you love coaching him because he's so such a great football player. And, you know, that that's great, but – I love coaching Caleb because he's a great person. Uh, I love I love dealing with him on a daily basis. You know, he and I text uh, basically every day. Sometimes it's about football. You know, most of the time it's about other things going on uh, in our lives. So we've been able to share, you know, quite a bit uh, since I've been able to coach him since you know before his freshman year, uh, all the way through you know him graduating uh, next year, and um, you know. Probably one of my favorite things that I've been able to share with Caleb is I have a three-year-old son and a nine-year-old daughter, and I'd be able to kind of share uh, that side of my life with him. And seeing him interact with both of them is just—it's special, you know. I, and and I send pictures of you know my kids with uh, with him to you know my parents to to his parents and to him um because it's such a unique and, and special time but that's just who Caleb is is he he loves uh being with other people he loves you know serving and giving uh to others um and something that he and I talk about quite a bit is you know he's got a unique platform that uh most people almost no people get an opportunity to have you know and how and how he's, how he's going to use that and he's very passionate about uh being able to help young people uh who maybe don't have all the opportunities available um and he just wants to be able to you know, help help kid and spread his positive energy and love, um, and and you know that's really why 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 I love uh, coaching Caleb is because I get to see um, him as a person more than just simply a football player who's you know the best throwing uh, quarterback I've ever seen and one of the most athletic uh, people I've ever been around but all that is uh secondary compared to uh the young man that he is and hopefully the young man that he keeps developing to become do you have a story that you can tell about when you recognize that caleb was the real deal as far as a football player yes as a football player and also as a a leader on your football team because the quarterback is i mean it's a leadership position yeah absolutely um well, as, as far as a football player, I mean, we, we'd identified him and, you know, you could see that there was something special about him, you know, when you watch like his youth ball film and everything. But one of the moments, the, the moment that probably jumps out to me was at a seven on seven at Penn State when, um, you know, there, there's a lot of great competition going on and Caleb's an incoming freshman and he's competing against two rising juniors uh who were both good football players uh studious football players you know they knew our offense and you know our offense for the high school level is uh, a fairly complex one um you know it's just not as easy as hey we're just gonna run zone and throw hitches or go routes um we you know we got a lot to it so you know he was behind as far as the mental side just learning the system so he's you know playing catch up uh trying to you know uh catch up to those guys who've been in the system for two years and knew it you know as well as uh the coaches basically knew the system um and he's younger than these kids but you know, we're at this uh, seven on seven at Penn State and these other jun- rising junior quarterbacks, they're they're doing well. Um, but, you know, Caleb is, you know, firing and uh, and slicing and dicing these teams. And then we get kind of to the nitty gritty of the playoff portion of the seven on seven tournament. And, you know, in the in the biggest of battles where, you know, there, there are fans surrounding the field and people are going wild and crazy. Um, you know, you just look at this kid who's a rising freshman and he looks like he's on the beach. Um, just, you know, 
poised as all get out and and uh just enjoying the moment and uh going in there with no fear uh making great play after play after play answering the bell uh every time he had to um and you kind of saw the team really feeling that vibe and uh and embracing that and that was kind of like the start of him ascending from the third string quarterback to earn the job uh to become the starter because once it became playoff time you know everybody really wanted to see him uh slinging the ball around because he was doing a great job a uh, great job at it and you know he was he was just poised um and in that poise, you kind of saw that that leadership uh, start coming out of him. As far as becoming a leader goes, um, he became a much more vocal leader this past year as a junior. But it started his sophomore year where, um, you know, my job as a coach is to help him be that be more of a vocal leader um where you know he can he can lead by example because you know he's such a good athlete and everything and he has a good work ethic um but as a quarterback you know you have to be demanding of your teammates so you know i would always push and prod him to start hey you know tell tell your receivers what you need them to do um and you know after some time he he got more and more comfortable with it and i just remember his sophomore year uh towards like the middle and the end of the year you know i didn't have to remind him uh to to really say you know hey i need you to do this to to the to the receivers you know he was starting to do that on his own and you know he's using the same language basically that we as coaches were using so that you know he was listening and he was delivering the right message um and so you just saw guys, you know, looking to him uh, in in times of uh, adversity, um, and uh, and he was going to be the poised uh, guy. And then you know, in in times of need to learn and get better, you know, guys are going to look to him because he essentially is an ext- an extension of the coaching staff. No, it's interesting you point out that he's using the language and the vernacular that you use as coaches because one of the things we as media folks do sometimes is be like, he's just parroting what the coach is saying. And in some cases, like the one you just mentioned, that's exactly what he's supposed to be doing. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's an underrated quality, and I appreciate you pointing that out. Um, I wanted to pivot from there just a little bit to about uh, Josie Wete. I know he plays on the other side of the ball, but I've come to find out that coaches know – about all of their kids. And this was a kid that I got to know a little bit throughout his recruiting. I kind of leave him alone once they get to school. But he was an interesting thinker. He knew exactly, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was, he's very artsy focused, but he's also a terrific linebacker. What were your impressions of him and what your, were your expectations for him? So, you know, like you said, I mean, Joseph is a, a quite creative young man um, who who's a free thinker and that's one of the things i always admired about him you know the all the recruiting stuff uh and and the football stuff uh never really got to his head at all um because he was more you know more important was the art um and and being a thinker um you know he's he's like a mini full he's like a a philosopher almost in a lot of ways you know some of my favorite uh, Joe mo- moments have nothing to do with football. You know, it'd be at pre-practice us, you know, just kind of talking and, you know, him, him, uh, schooling me up on, uh, Kanye and what, what he's really saying. Um, uh, but you know, it wasn't just, you know, rap, he would talk about politics, um, and what was going on, uh, politically, you know, socially, I know he did, um, you know, some social activism. Uh, and, and I always thought, man, like how, how special is that, that he can, you know, think for himself and voice, uh, these very deep opinions. Um, so, you know, that's what I saw out of, out of Joe, uh, being a person as far as football player, um, you know, supremely talented, um, and, uh, and always showed up, uh, ready to, uh, ready to work, um, work hard and, and, and focus on, you know, being the best version of himself as possible. And, and really, I think, you know, um, we were only scratching the surface. I think Joe has a lot of room to grow, um, to become, you know, uh, to, to fulfill his and maximize his potential. 